Since the start of the pandemic, YouTuber Chris Clemens has been extremely vocal calling out his fellow influencers for not abiding by COVID guidelines. Celebrity influencers have been acting as though they're not only immune from COVID, but they also believe they're immune from giving it to anyone else. Public shaming from fans only does so much, so it's great to see that Chris Clemens has been putting the pressure on his peers. Unfortunately, he doesn't seem to be doing much better. Although Chris Clemens has positioned himself as the example for his peers and fans to follow, Chris hasn't been doing the best job by obeying the COVID guidelines either. One of his most recent tweets that has over 33,000 likes and over 2,000 retweets at the time of writing this, and his tweet says, influencers be like, what content do you guys wanna see from me? Um, maybe you staying the heck home from your fifth vacation this pandemic. I found this extremely odd coming from Chris because in the last three months, he's not only traveled out of the state twice, but he also had a recent COVID scare. So as I see him calling out these other influencers, I can't help but ask myself, what the f is wrong with Chris Clemens? Before we get started, I wanna make it very clear that I think Chris Clemens is a good person. He's regularly donating to worthy causes and small business. Businesses. Chris is also vocal about his mental health to help others, and I respect that he speaks about political issues that he believes in. But that's what makes this situation even stranger. Chris Clemens is a good person, and he means well. He also seems quite intelligent. So how can he simultaneously call people out for traveling and going out when he's doing the same thing? This isn't just Chris Clemens either. I have plenty of friends here in Las Vegas who complain to me about people not following COVID guidelines, but then I see them out and about all the time on their social media profiles. What is happening? Do they not realize that they're doing the exact same thing they're telling other people not to do? If they aren't aware, why is that? As someone who is fascinated with human behavior, I thought it was not only a good time to ask what the is wrong with Chris Clemens, but what the is wrong with everyone else? And what the is wrong with us? Fortunately, cognitive psychology has some answers. Before we nerd out with some psychology, we need some backstory. If you don't watch Chris Clemens, you're missing out. He's kind as well as hilarious, and I'm mad at myself for taking so long to finally watch his content. But during the pandemic, I started watching his videos with my beautiful girlfriend, Tristan, and he regularly has me cracking up. As I got to know more about Chris through his videos, I saw him discussing COVID, donating to small businesses, and encouraging others to stay safe. Not only that, but I saw him calling out people like Tana Mojo, James Charles, and others who kept partying during the pandemic. Then something strange happened. On October 8th, Chris Clemens posted a video titled, Leaving LA for Very Caucasian Reasons. And it was a video about him traveling to Portland. I thought this was strange because as someone who has been so vocal about the lockdown and being responsible, I was surprised that he'd take the risk by traveling. But it didn't stop there. Less than a month later, on October 22nd, Chris posted a video titled, I was verbally assaulted while voting. In this video, he shares a story and video clips of him doing early voting in his state of California, and he was verbally assaulted. What I found surprising about this video was that he was out and about in Southern California to cast his ballot. As an influencer telling people to stay indoors who lives in a state with constantly rising COVID cases, I would think he'd mail in his ballot or at least do a drive-through drop-off to limit human contact. Then, on November 19th, Chris dropped a bombshell with a video titled, I Tested Positive for Coronavirus. In the video, Chris is extremely distraught and in tears because he tested positive for COVID. Chris has been getting tested regularly, but this test was for a very specific reason. Chris went and got this specific test because he was planning on collaborating with another YouTuber and wanted to be as safe as possible. While in tears, Chris talked about how unfair this is. He talks about 
about how he's doing quote unquote everything right, so this just isn't fair. This is when we really have to ask ourselves, what the f is wrong with Chris Clemens as well as the rest of us? How is it that Chris isn't able to see what he's made so public? In his mind, the anti-maskers around the world and influencers going to parties deserve to get COVID. As you saw from his recent tweet, he thinks other influencers shouldn't be traveling like they are. But we just went over Chris's own travel and activities prior to testing positive. How can he not see the reality of the situation? Now, if I were to play devil's advocate, I'd argue that Chris limited his exposure and was safe with testing. But this does not eliminate the cognitive dissonance that Chris is experiencing. He has publicly called out people for interacting with others and traveling while he tested positive before he was about to do a YouTube collaboration with another person. Cognitive dissonance is when the mind has two conflicting thoughts, which causes discomfort. In order to ease the dissonance, we justify and rationalize what's happening. From an outside perspective, we can see this clear as day, but when you're in it, you're completely oblivious. On one hand, Chris believes that other people should not travel, shouldn't collaborate, and should stay indoors. But on the other hand, Chris has things that he wants to do that involve traveling, collaborating, and going outside. So how does somebody ease this dissonance? Thankfully, Chris was retested and he found out that he had a false positive, so he didn't actually have COVID. When this happened, I figured that since Chris is a smart, rational person, Person, he'd be even more paranoid about traveling and going out, but that's not what happened. Weeks later, on December 13th, Chris posted a video titled, I drove across America alone. Why did he travel across America? To visit his family for the holidays. When driving across the country, we have to ask ourselves, how many stops did he make along the way where he interacted with other people? And is this more dangerous than flying because you've stopped so much on a cross country road trip, which makes it easier to spread the virus? And that brings us to today when Chris sent out that tweet, which said, again, influencers be like, what content do you guys wanna see from me? Um, maybe you staying the heck home from your fifth vacation this pandemic. Again, we have to ask ourselves, on a psychological level, what the hell is going on? Well, I'd theorize that Chris is experiencing one of the worst biases around, and it's something that we all fall victim to. This bias is known as the attribution bias. The attribution bias is when we judge others for doing something, but we make excuses for why we do the exact same thing. You probably experience attribution bias all the time when you're driving. When someone cuts you off or is speeding, they're an idiot or did it intentionally. But when you make a mistake while driving, it's because you were in a hurry or it was just a simple accident. Due to the attribution bias, we believe others have terrible intentions. But meanwhile, we believe that our intentions are pure. Our cognitive dissonance makes us look at our own situation in a much more nuanced way. So we can rationalize why we did what we did. The issue is, that we don't afford other people the same courtesy. None of us have been perfect during this pandemic, but we do need to become more self-aware. As good as we all think we're doing as we await the vaccine, we can all be doing better. We need to also remember that even if we're not massive influencers, we have an influence on the people around us. When we post pictures of us going out and traveling, we're sending the signal that it's okay for others to do the same. Chris Clemens may be subject to cognitive flaws, but he's not alone. I have the same problem, and so do you. It's part of being human. Last year, I read over 280 books, and most of them were on cognitive psychology. If there's one lesson I learned, it's that once we become aware of our cognitive flaws, it's easier to address and avoid them. Hey, hey, what's up, everybody? It's been a little while since I posted, and here's why. And if you enjoyed this video, I have exciting news for you. I don't know what my posting schedule is gonna be like this year because I'm focusing a lot on my writing, and I'm currently working on my new book called 
why is everybody so dumb? All right, so if you enjoyed this video, make sure you're following me on Twitter and Instagram. I'm gonna be writing and posting updates. I need feedback, I need beta readers, I need people to, you know, be involved in the process because I'm writing it for other people. But anyways, as I hope you gathered from this video, it's not just figuring out why everybody's so dumb, like we are part of everybody. I've been reading a lot about, uh, like I said, cognitive psychology and decision making and the different biases and flaws and irrationality that we all experience. So I'm hoping that this book can help us all make better decisions by learning about things like I mentioned in here, the attribution bias, cognitive dissonance, and all that kind of stuff. So make sure you're following me on social media, Twitter and Instagram. Like I said, I don't know how much I'll be posting this year. Like I was actually gonna come back with a video that was like, hey everybody, I don't know if I'm gonna be posting, but then I saw this and I was like, oh, well this ties into what I'm doing. So um, yeah, but anyways, uh, I write regularly over on um, Medium. I'm always on social media. So if you miss me, if you miss your boy Chris, make sure you follow me over there on Instagram and Twitter at The Rewired Soul. I've also been doing uh, daily TikToks, just kind of uh, recapping the writing process and getting feedback from people and stuff like that. All right, but anyways, I've been talking too much, way too much, but if you have any questions about the book or you're interested in becoming a beta reader or whatever, leave a comment down below, all right? But anyways, that's all I got for this video. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. If you're new, make sure you subscribe and ring that notification bell. And a huge thank you to everybody who supports the channel, whether it's over on Patreon or getting the other books that I've written or getting the books that I recommend that helps support the channel as well, all that stuff. You're all beautiful and amazing, and I'll see you next time.